one of the most iconic actors to have ever graced Hollywood. Marlon Brando is the human embodiment of the phrase, the man, the myth, the legend. Known for his iconic roles in films such as The Godfather, Apocalypse Now, A Streetcar Named Desire and many more, this Hollywood icon had a fruitful career spanning nearly six decades. However, with the passage of time, he grew severely disillusioned and began to hate acting. But Marlon Brando had to return to acting in order to fund his extravagant lifestyle. A powerful actor, Marlon Brando was notorious for his on-the-set antics. He was loved for his acting ability, yet feared for his volatility and tantrums. He often refused to memorize his lines, which would force the co-actors to wear cue cards to aid him in his dialogue delivery. Isaac Butler's book, the method how the 20th century learned to act states that Brando showed up late on the sets, had trouble memorizing his lines, which may have been due to his dyslexia, and played his scenes differently from day to day, making acting opposite him very difficult. Carl Malden recalls what Marlon Brando used to say to him, I quote, uh, this is how I'm going to play the scene today. I may play it differently tomorrow. You have to figure out what you're doing yourself. Unquote. According to Butler's book, Jessica Tandy was decidedly unhappy with the way Brando operated and called him, I quote, an impossible psychopathic bastard. Unquote. Other stories have come out over the years about issues colleagues had with Brando on the sets. For instance, in 1955, Marlon Brando starred with Frank Sinatra in Guys and Dolls, and they did not get along. Sinatra's dislike of Brando began when Brando was cast in the film On the Waterfront in the role that Sinatra wanted. So, Frank Sinatra went into Guys and Dolls, holding a grudge against his co-star. Sinatra referred to Brando as Mumbles and called his acting techniques that method crap. Brando had gotten back at Sinatra by repeatedly messing up his lines during a scene in which Sinatra's character had cake, so that Sinatra had to keep eating the cake repeatedly. Like everything else about him, Marlon Brando's romantic life was quite colourful and so complicated that he himself had trouble keeping track of his lovers. Recalling his time with Madeleine Monroe, Brando writes in his autobiography, I quote, She invited me over and it wasn't long before every soldier's dream came true." Unquote. From then on, these two maintained a bond that lasted until the end of her life. When Marilyn Monroe died, Brando was devastated and refused to believe it. Monroe's death, however, was not the first friend or lover's death that Brandon found difficult to take in. For Wally Cox, who was Brando's friend since they were kids in Illinois, Brando had once said, I quote, If Wally had been a woman, I would have married him, and we would have lived happily ever after, unquote. When Cox died in 1973, his widow chose Brando to spread the ashes in an area where Cox regularly hiked. But, unbeknown to the widow, Brando kept the ashes with him, sometimes even carrying them with him, all in a bid to remain near his dear friend in some way. The ashes were found near Brando 
when he finally died at the age of 80. The family then scattered the ashes of both the men in the death valley. Brando had a sweet and sour relationship with the actress Rita Moreno for nearly 12 years. It traumatized the latter. And when the relationship finally ended in 1961, Moreno took an overdose of sleeping pills. In between this infrequent and turbulent relationship with Rita, Brando was married for a couple of years to the Welsh actor Anna Cashpie. But after a year and a half, the two called it quits. The custody battle for their son took an ugly turn when Cashpie had their little son Christian kidnapped, who was later found by Brando's private investigator on the Mexico border, living in a tent and suffering from pneumonia. Marlon Brando was open about his homosexuality. In 1976, he said, I quote, Homosexuality is so much in fashion, it no longer makes news. Like a large number of men, I too have had homosexual experiences and I am not ashamed. I have never paid much attention to what people think about me. Unquote. Brando's relations with other men began when he attended military school where he slept with another cadet. Long after Brando died, record producer Quincy Jones came forward and revealed that Brando had had a fling with the comedian Richard Pryor. Also, his affair with the heartthrob James Dean was always under the limelight. The world remembers the dreamy, youthful hunk who later turned into a heavy-bodied veteran. The love for food reached such an intensity that at one point his second wife, Movita Castaneda, had to put up locks on their refrigerator. One morning, Castaneda discovered that he had broken the locks and left his teeth marks in a round of cheese. Brando loved Tahiti so much that he ended up buying a group of islands called Tetieroa and today it's home to a boogie resort that's aptly named, you guessed it, The Brando. The great actor had his way even at the fag end of his life. In the year 2004, doctors wanted to insert oxygen tubes into his lungs. But Brando simply refused for it. Was it his stubbornness or had he just resigned his fate? Soon after this incident, on the 1st July 2004, Marlon Brando left this world.